so there's this idea online that's been going around about going all in right just burning the boats and fully focusing on one goal until you achieve it and i'm sure you've seen the videos as well that go this is just trying to go all in right well i've been trying that out recently so if you've been doing a levels then you know that this is the time for gcses right and so just like everyone else i had pretty much piled everything towards the last minute or just before the last minute and so i was like I have a lot of work to do. I barely have any time. So might as well just dive head first and go all in, right? At least try it out, see what it actually feels like. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been working or I've been studying about four to six hours a day. That is deep focus work. A bit of that is revision, but I only count the revision in that which I am actually focused in or focused during. Besides that, it's mostly just solving questions, solving past papers, that's it, right? Nothing else. And I'm slowly gonna take this four to six to six to eight and eventually eight to 10. That's where I wanna get to at least a 10 hour study day, I guess you could say, because I wanna really push my limits when it comes to this idea of going all in. And this idea of transitioning slowly into it is actually the truth because no one's gonna tell you that you can't actually go from zero to one immediately. You need to go from, if you go from zero to one in one day, you're gonna go from one to zero in one day as well. So you slowly build it up to the point where you can actually work that much. Now I will say I was watching a bit of YouTube here and there when I was eating or when I was done with all the studying of the day and it was just before it shined I was just watching a bit of YouTube so like business stuff building a creative business a bit of fitness here and there and a few Islamic talks but we'll, we'll get to that in a second so the truth is right going all in isn't as fun as it sounds this is the stuff that no one's gonna tell you but going all in isn't as as dramatic as it sounds it's not as fun as it sounds it's actually pretty ugly like you need to reset your expectations because every single time at least i've seen one of those videos of this is your sign to go all in when i've seen those in the past i always used to get so high i was like yes mock mode let's go fully demolish this goal whatever right but when i actually get to doing the work it would always be terrible it would always be so painful that i didn't want to go all in right because obviously there's expectations versus reality the expectation is that you're just going to be this beast who's working 12 hours a day if immediately going from zero to working 12 hours a day immediately without any any transition period and then you're also going to make a lot of progress you're going to be completely focused there's there's nothing that's going to distract you right but the reality is actually the opposite it's going to take time for you to actually get into that zone of working 12 hours a day and also it's not going to be as hype it's not going to be as fun most of it is actually just going to be boring and just repetitive you're going to be waking up doing the same things again and again and again and again and again it just gets to a point where you start to question this whole th thing of even going all in right like just understand that there's a lot of pain involved there's a lot of boringness if if that is in the word i just made it up but there's a lot of boring stuff involved there's a lot of repetitive stuff involved and it's not as glamorous as it is on social media you just have to work 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 to the point where your back hurts after sitting for so long this actually happened to me i was studying so much because of which i was sitting so much because of which my lower back started to hurt like crazy i would go to sleep my back would hurt i'd stand up my back would hurt i'd sit down my back would hurt it was like i had gotten the lower back of an old man as an 18 year old that's literally what it felt like it's not a fun feeling whatsoever i don't wish that for anyone else now obviously there's a nuance to this right if you enjoy your work if you genuinely enjoy your work then you may not feel that amount of boredom. You may not feel that amount of pain, but there is still going to be pain involved because you're still gonna have to, let's say that you enjoy writing. You're still gonna have to sit down and write for extended amounts of time, for hours upon hours on end, like five hours, six hours a day. You're still gonna have to write that. For example, Alex Ramosi, he loves to write, but when he was working on his book, he was writing for about six hours a day. A six hours a day of deep focused work for his book that's what it takes right sure he enjoyed the process but i i'm pretty sure there was still a level of discomfort involved in that as well i may be wrong who knows but that's just my observation i don't enjoy studying whatsoever right so this is not fun for me it's like every single day i'm pretty much just fighting pure pain <laughs> that's what it feels like so i've noticed that i've become a lot more irritable i've i've, I've started becoming angrier much easily I've, I've started to i've been starting to get irritated and annoyed much easily i don't know why but i remember this happening once before as well when i was preparing for my university test right the entry test for getting into university i remember i was i was only studying about two hours a day but even those two hours for like three weeks straight 
got to me. I was becoming increasingly miserable day by day and I was becoming increasingly annoyed day by day on just very little tiny things. So I guess this again has to do with if you actually enjoy the thing that you're going all in on or not. Now, another thing that actually hurts me a lot is that I lost all my gains. I, my forearms are finished, right? I pretty much have just thicker than twig forearms, right? My biceps are gone. My chest has lost a lot of size. It's like my abs are kind of there, kind of not there. You can see my neck is so much more skinnier than it, was, than it used to be. And my shoulders have reduced in size. My traps are pretty much non-existent now. My calves were never existent, but they've gone down even now. So I've lost pretty much all my gains that I ever made. <laughs> and t the proof of that is I went from 68 kilograms all the way to 62 kilograms. I started at 68 kilograms before Ramadan. Now I'm at about 62 or 63. I lost about five to six kilograms. And I guess that is pretty much m mostly muscle. That hurts, you know, because I remember when I truly was into fitness, when I was truly all in on fitness, right? That was the only thing on my mind. And as a result, I was able to go from fat to fit within a year. I made tremendous amounts of progress. And then eventually I found make money online, right? And that's when my gains started to plateau. And eventually they went down, right? And now I'm here where I am. And honestly, it hurts. Like, I, th there's, if there was one thing that was seriously going for me, it was fitness, right? It was my physique. It was the gym. Well, it wasn't the gym I was training at home, but... It was calisthenics, right? To lose that, especially see that literally being stripped away from you during this period because I haven't been working out. I haven't been really focusing on my health, right? Because studying is a priority. It's honestly so painful. It, it genuinely is so painful. Especially because, like, I, I used to be, I guess you could say, in pretty good shape. And now I'm nowhere near that. There's a big element of pain involved in that realization. I, g I genuinely feel like crap. I feel like poop. I kid you not. I feel like poop. It, it hurts, but it is what it is. It's the reality. I'm going to talk about that in a second. One more thing. Deen and Iman take a hit unless you manage them perfectly. That's literally... I've noticed that more than anything else. Whatever you were created for, you're putting it on the back burner. And you're focusing on something else. Then it will obviously take a hit. Right? Your Iman is obviously going to take a hit unless you manage it perfectly. And this is what I noticed, right? I wasn't able to manage everything perfectly. Like, think about it. I'm going to talk about this in a second. But I, I've been studying, right? I, I was trying to fulfill the rights of the Quran. And I was also trying to... And I was also trying to figure out this whole YouTube thing, right? How am I going to be able to manage Deen when I'm studying for multiple hours a day? I'm spending a portion of my free time trying to figure out the whole YouTube game. And I'm also then trying to learn more about Islam and I'm trying to read the Quran, etc. It's not going to work out. It's never going to work out, right? And as a result, it kind of, that feeling of low Iman, it just, it's something that cannot be described. I'll give you an example. I remember Ustad Abu I was watching one of his videos and he mentioned the story where he used to prepare for his exams last minute, right? And because of that, he wouldn't read much Quran. So he went to his teacher one day whilst he was in the exam preparation season. And he said to him, I feel very sad. So his teacher said to him, when was the last time you read the Quran? He said, it's been a few days because I've been fo focused on exams. He said, that's your answer. This story has such a deep lesson behind it that if you don't, if you don't prioritize the deen, then you're never, ever, 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 ever going to even feel satisfied with anything because that's just how it is. But you need to be able to manage your deen and you need to be able to manage the thing that you're going all in on. These are pretty much the only two things that you can actually juggle around. You need to learn to sacrifice, right? I've sacrificed a level of health, a level of gains, and going forward, YouTube, right? Until my GCSEs are over. Because that's just what it takes, right? You cannot manage five things at once if you're trying to go all in. It's just not going to happen. There's only one or two things. Ideally one, but Dean is always going to be there. So it's pretty much always going to be two things, right? So you need to sacrifice everything else for just this one thing that you really, really want. It's an obligation, not a choice. Now, I will say, it seems like I've been pooping on this a whole idea of going all in. It's actually very valuable as well. It's actually extremely valuable if you look at it from the right lens. The one major thing that I've learned is that I had set limits upon myself that I didn't know I could break. So I used to believe previously that you needed to take a break every one, one and a half, two hours of work you did, right? That belief was shattered like crazy. You know why? Because this Friday, I sat down and I pretty much did math papers from 7 a.m. all the way to 12 p.m with just a bathroom break that was around five to ten minutes in between i went upstairs i went to the bathroom and then i came back down 
that's the only break I had during five hours of straight study. And ideally, I didn't even want to take the bathroom break, but I had to, otherwise th things wouldn't end up good. If this was a perceived limit, right? I completely destroyed it and I've set a new limit. And now I'm gonna try and completely destroy that and I'm gonna set a new limit, right? It's like you find out what your edge is as David Data says in the way of the superior man. He says that live to your edge. You start to find out what your edge is in a specific domain of life, the domain that you're going all in on. You start to find that out. And so you can mess around with how close you wanna actually be to it, right? If my edge is 10 hours a day of work, right? Then I can push towards eight or nine or seven or six, right? This is the thing, like I, if you know what your limits are, that is very powerful because when it's time to push, you know that, okay, I can immediately push towards this extent because I know I've done it before. That's, a, that's actually a very powerful and secure feeling, knowing that you can actually work a certain amount of time every single day and actually having proof of that because you've done that before, it's so powerful. It's one thing to say that, yeah, sure, working 10 hours a day, I know I can probably do that. And then there's one thing to say, I know I can work 10 hours a day for a fact because I've actually done it. It's much more secure to be on this side of things. The second thing is that you learn to prioritize and you learn to say no to things. This comes from a previous point I mentioned about sacrifice. For me right now, for example, YouTube isn't the priority, health isn't the priority, Dean is always gonna be the priority, right? So besides that, studying is the major priority, right? That is the, the main thing. So I must say no to going to the gym. I must say no to creating more focusing on YouTube, making YouTube videos, right? This is what I was gonna say. Like, there is no point in me watching YouTube videos about business and stuff like that because I, that's not the priority right now. That's not the focus, right? If that isn't the focus, then why am I spending, why am I spending part of my brain on that stuff? It, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I'm learning essentialism through this practice of going all in, which is very powerful because essentialism is what you need to actually make progress in anything in life. So, so I've narrowed things down to just Dean and study. One of the major learning lessons that I had from this period of kind of going all in was that you learn to you learn to just get the work done. You learn to just push through pain and just get stuff done, get the work done. For the past, I guess, five days, four days, I, I've been sleeping around five hours a night and I actually like to sleep eight. I've been pretty much sleeping three hours short for the past five days. And every single morning when I wake up for Fajr, I'd be dreading what I had to do after Fajr, which was to sit down and solve math papers upon math papers upon math papers. I didn't want to do it, but it was necessary. It was, it was stuff that needed to be done. Otherwise, I was just going to cause pain to my future self. So I was like, just shut up. Don't listen to your feelings. Just get the stuff done. And I'd be a bit sleep deprived while solving the papers. But it is what it is. I had to do that, right? Because I had to sleep after Isha, which is later now. And I had to wake up at Fajr, which is earlier now. So I could only get about five to six hours of sleep during that time. And I could not sleep after Fajr because I had to actually get more work done throughout the day. So there was literally no other option besides just going with the five hours of sleep and just getting the stuff done. That's what mattered. And that's exactly what I did. You just learn to shut up, not listen to your feelings and just get the work done, which is the most important thing by far. If you want to win at anything in life is just shutting up and getting the work done. It's not meditation. It's not any of the self-improvement habits. It's just getting the work done. That's what matters. Even though going all in comes at a cost, the result of going all in is actually amazing you actually get the desired result by the permission of Allah, obviously, that you actually want it. For example, there was a, there's a friend of mine, he went all in on appointment setting during this month of April, right? He was working for, I, I think he was working like eight hours a day or something. Eight hours a day, was sleep deprived, right? W wasn't working out, wasn't taking care of his health, but he made 1.6K USD, right? He made 1.6K USD by the end of this month of April. That's just what it is. He went all in on appointment setting. He sacrificed a lot of the other things in his life. And now he's made 1.6K. Similarly, there's another entrepreneur that you can watch on YouTube. His name is Zayn Mia. He started a new business, right? He started a business called The Coaching Solution. And he went all in on that, right? He started this new business in the month of April. And he wanted to win the school game. So he went all in. He was pulling all-nighters. He didn't care about his sleep. He didn't, he didn't care about his health. He just went all in on building this new product and getting it to as high of an MRR as possible. And he did it. He won the school games. He got it to 30K a month MRR, USD, by the way. That was a result of going all in. So this can be extremely, extremely valuable if you have a lot of work to do in a very short amount of time, but it isn't supposed to be sustainable. Remember that. It's not supposed to be sustainable at all. If you continue doing 10 hours of deep work every single day for, for a whole month, you're gonna burn out by the end of that month, right? That's just how it is. So it's not supposed to be sustainable. It's just a period of catching up on a lot of work in a very short amount of time.
so that's pretty much what I wanted to say about going all in. That's pretty much what it kind of feels like. And if you actually want to try it out, I highly recommend you actually try it out. Just manage your deen. Well, know what time you're actually going to read in the Quran, what time you're actually going to be doing this. Because if you don't do that, then your iman is going to take a big hit. Besides that, I'll see you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.